Welcome back to New Am Sam Mayor, the podcast for creators. It is I, Hobo Boyce, the mayor in the mayor's office on this Monday, hanging out with people who are doing, moving, and shaking in the world of the city for creatives. And well, my guest today is the author of not one, but two, and more to come of these um, awesome novel and children's books. Give it up, please, Miss Samika Carter. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. You're doing great. You know, awesome. great grades have to battle. You know, sometimes you just say we're good. Even when we're not good, we say we're we say we're good. We are great. It's a whole different level. Yes, yes. Thanks to God, I'm doing great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I what I was inspired by was your recent release, Two Beautiful Butterflies. And what was cool about that, it came with its own little illustration, the children's book field, a very uplifting message. Uh, walk me through the process. What made you decide to write this book here today? Well, um, being a mother of two daughters and knowing that one day I will have to let them go out into this world and fly um, in a preteen ages, um, just encouraging them to know that, you know, no matter what, when you fall, you have to get up. You have to be willing to get back up and fly. You're going to have some storms along the way, but mm -hmm. you have to stand strong and you have to be able to move forward, encourage yourself, encourage others. So, you know, I know that it's a tough world out there for our young kids and, you know, love starts at home. We have to start, we have to raise our kids up knowing that they can be able to do any and everything. And so Beautiful Butterflies is not only dedicated to my two girls, but also to every beautiful little girl in the world, just encouraging them and letting them know that they can be any and everything and be willing to fly and go out there and spread your wings. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. it a, a situation where you, you were with your daughters, you're inspired to write for them, or was it an idea you had in your mind and said, let me put pen to pad? Like what was the first moment that said, I gotta put, I gotta make this a book? The first moment um, was when my daughter, my oldest came home and she was crying because she was being teased at school. She got big, she had big eyes and I always tell her, you know, encouraging her, you're beautiful. No matter what other people think you have to know deep down in your heart that you're beautiful. And, um, I was like, you know, looking, looking at her and looking at her youngest sister that was, you know, picking up everything that her sister was saying. And I had to learn to encourage them. And then I realized that time is not forever that eventually they gonna get older and I will have to allow them to branch out. Yeah. And I begin to, to write the book to, to let them know that I'm gonna continue to encourage you. If I have to let the world know that I have to encourage you, that's what I'm gonna do. And that's when that book started. Was there any hesitation with sharing your advice for your daughters with other people? Was there any moment where should this be internal or was it just new from the get-go? This has to be shared with the world. It was from the get-go that it had to be shared with the world, not only for my girls once again, but for every little girl to know deep down in their heart that you have to be strong. And to every mother, you have to encourage your daughters. Start, start at a young age, you know, uh, teaching them to love themselves. In order to love others, you have to love yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, like I say, we live in a world where we have to teach them at a young age. We have to start, start leading them at a young age. What I like, excuse me, what I like about your book is that you take things that would be uh, things that we would learn as children, but you find a way to reinforce it. Uh, just so I can take an excerpt on page 18. You say, be kind to others as you would like them to be you. When someone falls down, help them up, help them to fly high. I love you. Um, what I liked about that is, is even though it's under the the, the premise of butterflies, it doesn't mm -hmm. have a, a very spiritual undertone to that. Now, was that intentional? Or was, it, was that just part of you imparting your idea of the work? That's part of me. Um, I'm a person that's always willing to help someone. Mm -hmm. um, I can, I mean, I, I started teaching my girls at a young age to, to give back, uh, even started bringing them to nursing homes to, to give to the elderly 
And that's just that's just who I am. I'm all about giving. And you like th- like the word says, better to give than to receive. Mm. So that's just part of who I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and when you're not writing, you probably have this whole other life of just dealing with the the, the the trials and tribulations of adulthood. How do you find that balance between creating and just going through your other your responsibilities? To be honest with you, I find that that balance. I I stay tuned in with God. That's the mm-hmm. only way I can make it through this life. Yeah. Um, um, I write everything down. I go to God with everything, and that's how I stay balanced. That's the only way. That's the only way for me. I promise you that. Yeah, I, yeah. I understand. A lot of times when when life gets hard, even if if you're listening now and you're not necessarily a religious, but having that that true north, that compass, uh, if it is God, is definitely something that seems to be positive. You know, I grew up in a Christian household myself, and mm-hmm. my mother would always say, "Trust in the Lord." Right. So <laughs> that's kind of my thing. Uh, what yeah. What's your writing process like? Do you, do you write in the mornings and get on about your day? When do you write when inspiration strikes? Is it a thing you put in the calendar? Like what's the the intent to your career there? My writing process, um, I don't have time to write first thing in the morning, mm-hmm. but every every night I write. Every night I write. Um, I'm writing, I'm j- jotting everything down. Um, like right now, I'm trying to focus on writing a second children's book. And I'm just writing every every day. That's my process. Just write every day before I go to bed. Mm. So your book is self-published, uh, and and something pretty admirable about making it happen. Put in that tire thing on your shoulder, push it through to get it available to for people to see and read. A lot of our listeners struggle with that of whether or not they should write it themselves or look for an imprint. And there's pros and cons to both. What was your decision to do this on your own through your own imprint? Um, To do it on my own, I would say I was someone that wasn't tuned into school because of the childhood that I went through. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to prove to myself that I can do it on my own. Um, You know, like I tell my kids, you have to be willing to know you can do any and everything. And so I I decided to step out on faith and write this book on my own. Also doing the illustration. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. you you did all the illustrations yourself and you wrote the book. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm now I'm really curious. It, do you have like drawing days? Did you write it first? Did you work like well, what is that process like? Because I can't draw worth a lick. I'm telling you right now, I can't draw circles. So <laughs> what was your what was your process? So I wrote the book first, and that fr- and then I was thinking about getting um my daughters to draw the book, but because my oldest she she's an artist, she can draw you if she see you. Oh, right. but, uh, yeah so she was like no mom she gave me ideas but um i just took the time to just you know start jotting down and start imaging the the uh the pictures for the book um and it, it wasn't hard at all because i love to draw um but i'm not as good as her but yeah yeah that's cool having the the many forms of creative expression inside the same household. To, to hopefully, can collaborate later on. That'd be kind of a cool thing, cool project, right? Well, yeah, that's what that's the plan for the next book. Uh, yeah. It's gonna draw the the pictures for the next book. She promised me that. Yeah, yeah. So, so is that something you're you're thinking about pursuing? Is more into children's work, or just how so happens the next project is another children's book, and you're willing to keep your options open? Um. Right now, my focus is is the children's book. Um, you know, the world we live in, there's so many children that is lost. Um, so my my main focus is trying to get more children's books out there, be able to go to live book fairs. Um, our children need us. They mm-hmm. are the future, and, and that's my focus is, is spreading the word through do book do these children books so these little kids because you know they can be able to grow and manifest in this world yeah. so that's my main focus is children's book um moving forward I, I can imagine the feedback you must have received from some of the parents who bought a couple copies what, what's the things you've been hearing from others um 
the part about bonding with your kids, like in, in the book, it's saying, I enjoy our mother daughter times and having a physical book is a bonding time. Like, mm-hmm. even, you know, going back to the traditional way of reading, um, I find that that gives the kids and the parent time together and they're able to discuss each page after it's been read. And, um, like I had one mother in church, she was like, my grandkids, like the grandmother, she was like, my grandkids love the book. We constantly reading the book. And I love to hear that feedback. And the, these little girls, you know, they know that they're beautiful no matter what someone tells them. They mm-hmm. got that from that book. And mm-hmm. that's what I love about it. Yeah. I I like the fact that there is this this drive to really you know bond with your children i i don't have kids and i know that that parenthood is a, is a gift but sometimes i do hesitate uh about you know the world we're living in you know about raising really? other human beings <laughs> to be good citizens and, and good people and uh i, I do not wish out anyone <laughs> but parents are Ooh. just signing up volunteering to do so like how, how's that been <laughs> It's a lot. And that's why I wrote the book, because I know one day I'm going to have to let them go out into this world by themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. You know, it's so much going on in the world. And it's so many, so many young kids that is leaving because it's just so much violence. And I had to prepare myself. That's why I wrote this book, you know, to encourage my own self that I have to let them go out and fly. Yeah. Cause it's, it's just tough. Like I have one that's close to graduating. She's going to graduate next year. And then her, her sister is right behind her. And I'm like, I tear up just knowing that that time is coming. Yeah. But this book, I can reference back to what I wrote and say, you know, I have to let them go out and fly. And if I, you know, by me teaching them at a young age, I know I can never go wrong with, um, with them out in this world. Yeah. Pandemic aside and everything, that's <laughs> they can handle that. They can handle anything. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh wow, I, I I'm inspired. But I, what you. what do you do to refill the cup? Like, what do you do to recharge or energize when you when you're just giving out every every energy to every single or like? What do you do to make sure you're you have a sound sense of self? Once again, I stay prayed up. <laughs> yeah. God is my strength. He's my strength. Um, I stay prayed up. I stay active. Um, waking up early. Uh, just saying a word of God and do a little exercise in the morning before I start my day. But that's the only way I can stay charged up is God. That's the only way. That's the only way for me. And and your days off? Do you take days off? How do you celebrate those? Um, days off, um, I celebrate those days with my girls. Um, mm-hmm. My husband, he he's constantly working. but And then also with him, uh, he loves to build. So I'm helping him. I go out there and help him. And then just enjoy life. Give me a, a glass of wine and, you know, just sit there and enjoy listening to music. Um, just enjoy every every minute of living. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's what you can do. You only got one life, right? Live the best way you can. Yeah. 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 You know, someone's listening to this now and they have an idea of writing a book in their head, but there's a lot of like, I'm not sure if anyone cares. I'm not sure if I have the strength to do it. Is there any advice you can just offer up for someone who's done it? Someone's on top of that hill looking down and say how your process was? I would tell them to just do it. Don't don't think twice, do it. You know, you only get one life to live. Do it, do it. The sky is the limit. Do it, just do it. You know, don't, no sense of keep thinking about it. Just do it. That's all I can say, you know? You just gotta go go for it. Yeah, you, you, you can't have a leap of faith without a leap, right? Or faith. Yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to just do it. That's all I can say, you know, like, don't hesitate. You have to step out on faith and just say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And that's it. You know, like Nike say, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Slogan's enduring. I love it. <laughs> uh, 
Two Beautiful Butterflies, the second book in your bibliography. The first, My Heavenly Father Never Forsaken Me. A different genre. This one's more of a memoir. But there is a little bit of, uh, of a through line of, of uplifting, of, of inspiration, of overcoming life struggles. And uh, I like the fact you say true to that. If someone wanted to see and learn more about your books, how do they go about doing that? Um, I finally got back on social media. So, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I knew that's the only way I can, you know, pursue anything. It's going back. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Um they can look me up like I'm going to have that new website that um, I'm going to share with the rural. But I would say um, continue to I would tell them continue to follow me. Uh, they can look up my name and the information behind it. Yeah, the books are available on uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, Goodreads, wherever books are sold. Two Beautiful Butterflies, uh, written and illustrated. Didn't know that. Written and illustrated <laughs> by yourself. That's that's a double threat, I tell you. Like, I, I am the worst with shapes, and you made it look dope. <laughs> so props for that. <laughs> I got to ask, though, if you give us any kind of inkling what the upcoming book might be, just a little bit of a taste. I mean, you know, no pressure if you have something. The upcoming book? Yeah. Um, the upcoming book is going to be about a tiger. Uh, so mainly dedicated to boys. Um, it's dedicated to a cousin that I lost that was murdered. Mm. So it's not going to have quite the murder scene, you know, anything about murder in the book because it's a children's book. Sure. But uh, it's Tiger Journey to His New Home. So basically, yeah. he, he's going through this road trying to get to his new home, which is heaven. Yeah. So he has some obstacles along the way that's stopping him from getting to his new home. And eventually, he finds his way to his new home. Oh, I can't wait to read it when it gets released. If it's anything like Two Beautiful Butterflies, I'll probably buy, buy, buy some for my cousin's kids uh, because it was an entertaining read uh, around the corner. So make sure people check it out on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble. Two Beautiful Butterflies, available now. Uh, so, Mika, thanks so much for being on the show. I want you back later on. I want to see when that book is released how it, how it works out for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time.